Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for both looking and feeling your best. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011, and I love to also include the integrative functional and biohacking angle to helping a slower aging process and feel and look our best all at the same time. Today, we have a very special guest joining us here. We have Heather Gray joining us. We're going to be diving into the world of toxins in our beauty products, in our environment, different things to detox. So hold on. This episode is going to help you clear out the noise and just really be your most beautiful version. So today we have Heather Gray, a functional diagnostic nutritionist and bioenergetic practitioner specializing in supporting clients with chronic complex illnesses such as Lyme disease, mold toxicity, and autoimmune diseases. With over 32 years of personal experience, she understands the struggles of living with these conditions and is dedicated to helping others find relief. Her personalized approach as a practitioner, podcast host, and author has helped countless clients reduce inflammation in the body and brain, improve gut health, and achieve optimal wellness. She helps her clients get to the root cause of their symptoms and helps them take control of their health journey. Heather's approach is not only effective, but also empowering. Don't let chronic illness control your life. You can achieve the health and vitality you deserve. And everybody tuning in, check out the show notes to learn more about Heather and a course she's offering, and also learn more over at thelimeboss.com. Welcome, 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 Heather Gray, to the show. I'd love to kick things off and ask you the unlimited dollar question here that I'd love to ask everybody. What is radiance to you? You know, radiance to me is somebody showing up completely, authentically, unabashedly themselves, right? That they're just so confident and so grounded and so beautiful and so much love and heart centered. Um, You know, you asked me for an example before we got on and I really couldn't think of one um, except for myself actually, because anytime I go out these days, I get stopped by random people to tell me about how awesome my energy is. Like it's been crazy lately and it's been happening a lot more over the past six months than than it ever has. So I was like, oh, that would be me. But um, I, I haven't noticed that a whole lot lately. Uh, with people that I come in contact with, but working from home, I'm I'm not working, I'm not out in the public a whole lot these days either. So I'm kind of like you, you know, a little isolated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am on a small island on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Um, so before we started recording, you were sharing that you were at a number of different events, including the biohacking event, which I didn't get to this year, but well, uh, next year. And actually what you said is in my opinion one of the highest forms of a compliment oh i just had to come and talk to you oh there's something about your energy and i know that you do bioenergetics with your clients as well in the work that you do and we often think that people are just going to notice us for the way that we look however um, people oftentimes that we form much deeper connections with it's more of like this this vibe this energetic gravitation so i'd love for you to actually go a little bit deeper into some more of the things that the people were saying to you. I think it's great that you use yourself in regards to your energy. Like, what did they say? Like, oh, I just saw you. I had to come up and talk to you. Or tell me more about what that was like for you to hear that. Uh, yeah, I mean, so it was a random like hotel guy. You know, I'm standing there waiting for my cab and I lock eyes with him. And all of a sudden, it's just like a tractor beam. He comes in, you know, and I also accredit that to being more in my feminine, which has a tendency to be more magnetic to begin with and less in the masculine, um, because as an entrepreneur, right, as a, you know, a woman business owner, I have a tendency to run a lot of masculine energy and all that's doing is getting me burnt out and sick. Um, So I've been trying to, like I said, work more in my feminine, work more with bioenergetic space, have faith, right? So getting rid of that worry, you know, so it's just, a, I'm a lot more approachable than I used to be. I used to, I guess, I guess I used to have a horrible resting bitch face, you know, and people were like, oh my God, I thought you were so bitchy until I met you. And then I, and then you're really awesome. And I don't actually get that anymore. So I must've cleared some of that stuff away and I'm a little more approachable these days, which is good. That's what I want to be. I don't want to be 
not approachable. I don't want people to think I'm a bitch to begin with. Yeah, and it's, it's so interesting. I think of one of my best friends, and she's always been like she wears like a lot of dark clothing. I think she kind of does it to uh, protect her energy, but she's highly intuitive, highly empathic, the biggest heart ever. But people, you know, make this assumption about her because she looks a certain way. But that that's such a special experience to have had someone basically be attracted to your energy. I'm curious how that conversation went. And you also mentioned something, well, two things, very key, feminine energy and faith, 100%, amen, sister. And so many of you listening here, you might identify with that, you know, running the house, running your business, working at a job, looking after everything, you know, both for the ladies and the gents listening. And there's so much more power when us as women and also men, when we show up in our balanced feminine and masculine energies, it's so good. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. And, and the faith stuff. So talking about bioenergetics and detoxing, different things that can happen to us 100% um, that can just really take the load off, praying to the big guy and uh, giving those up to him. So speaking of the load and the things that can happen in our lives that can really impact our energy and our physicality, talk about priming events. Tell us what a priming event is and how it can precipitate other things happening uh, physically and bioenergetically. Yeah, I learned a lot of this stuff from when I was uh, learning underneath uh, Dr. Amy Apigian. She put out the biology of trauma. And that was like the last little piece to my health story after, you know, becoming a functional practitioner and overcoming 27 years of undiagnosed Lyme disease and three autoimmune diseases and mold toxicity and cavitations and suicide attempts, I would get better and then I would relapse, you know, three months, six months, nine months. Then I'd clean myself up again, I'd get better and then I would relapse. And it was right around 2020. I was like, what is going on here? What, you know, what's keeping me from, from staying healthy? And that's when I started learning about trauma and how it can get stored in the nervous system and how if you're stuck in fight or flight, if there's always a tiger chasing you, you know, you can never heal. Um, and, you know, my uncle had committed suicide when I was four. My grandmother died that same year of breast cancer. And that really started off my, my uh, autoimmune disease of celiac at that time and started kind of priming me, prepping me, right, for being a good host for anything else that came along. So priming events can be anything that, that kind of stick this trauma in your nervous system, big T, little T, whether it's, you know, chemicals and toxins, mold, Lyme, chronic viruses, bacteria, or it can be, you know, early childhood trauma, you know, divorce, military, that sort of thing. But when we've got the microglia in our brain, which is our brain's immune system, and it's, it's looking for things to, uh, you know, to, to keep the dull roar, once we have that priming event, it's, it's putting our immune system on, on alert, right? And so now it's looking at everything like it's a problem. And, you know, it, it might not be a problem, but we've got collateral damage going on from your immune system and your brain being hyper alert, you know, just like an autoimmune disease almost, right? To where when a lot of people have issues with, you know, Hashimoto's, wheat looks a lot like the thyroid tissue. So if you eat wheat, your body's attacking the thyroid, thinking that it's a, it's a, it's a bad, it's a, it's a bad guy. And it's not, you know, it's kind of similar thing going on in your brain. And the unfortunate part is that once you've had a priming event that, that puts your nervous system on alert, your immune system on alert like that in your brain, it leads you more susceptible to having other priming events down the line. So things that cause brain inflammation and, and brain damage, you know, so for me, um, like alcohol, like I've had to completely give up drinking because after one drink, the next day I'm talking about taking myself off this earth. I mean, that's how inflamed my brain gets. And that's even with taking binders. Like, you know, we were talking about Dave Asprey before we got on here, you know, and I've been following him for 15 years. He was talking about mold and Lyme before anybody else was talking about mold and Lyme. So he's always been a hero of mine. And so I'm always a little jealous that he can still talk about that. He drinks tequila every now and then. And, and then he takes binders and he does these things to hack. But that I've, I've done all those hacks and they don't work. They don't, they don't work for me. My, my body's just like, nope, you're done. And, you know, alcohol is toxic to begin with. You know, I don't care how you slice it or what, how you want to spin it. It's toxic. Our body really, our liver especially works so hard to break that down and get rid of it. 
And I work so hard every day, the money I spend, the time I spend keeping myself humming along at this really high level that it's just not worth it to me anymore. I completely agree with you. And a lot of times when people are going through something like what you call this priming event, for me, it was a car crash. And then it was mold exposure and renovations. Then they were parasites. Then there was another car crash. Neither of them were my fault. Then there was emotional stuff, relationship stuff. Like stress is a sign of being alive, everybody. It's how we manage these events and whether or not they become a primer. Or I like this other angle of like how you live too, I'm sure, Heather. We look after ourselves so well all of the time. Every step of the day, we're looking to make great decisions for moving our body, eating the right foods, staying hydrated, making sure we have our, all the nutrients that we need and reducing exposure to toxins. And all of you here on the show know that I wrote a research paper on reducing oxidative stress. What that looks like, it's like a biohacking framework for purifying your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics and eating the right foods and detoxing from yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metal, and parasites. Now that sounds like a lot and it can take a long time to do. And Heather, I know that you do this work too, uh, very extensively, which is fantastic. So I was able to overcome those obstacles and those life stressors. And it's funny when you mentioned energy, I did a recording with a lovely woman and she sent me a parasite cleanse. And then I cleared parasites, you know, 10 to 14 days later. And I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I could feel those good extra fat melted away. Skin looked better. Hair was growing in fuller. Nails were growing like weeds without any ridges or marks in them. And, you know, when we show up, when we do the work, when we need help, when we need support from our community, it, sh it shows up to give us what we need at that point to support us on our journey. And uh, I am very happy that you mentioned alcohol because when we go through life events, say, for example, the passing of some of your loved ones, sometimes people go to alcohol as a crutch or they go to food or they just do things that are not healthy for them. And then you get, you know, all this other whirlwind of things and they don't call it alcohol is called spirits. They don't call it spirits for nothing. And because you do the bioenergetic work, I know that you also really grasp that to be our most beautiful, healthiest, vibrant, energized selves, we have to also be as pure as possible. So tell me your approach to purification for you. Just how far does it go with the body, mind, spirit, and energy sides of things? Oh my gosh. I mean, if I were to like rebrand myself, Today, I would, instead of being the Lyme boss, you know, I would be like the detox diva or, or, you know, something along those lines, because getting rid of toxins, usually that's the easiest thing first, right? Getting rid of toxins in your environment, you know, getting rid of like the Glade air fresheners and, and scented laundry detergent and perfumes and that sort of stuff, getting cleaner, healthier skin and hair ingredients. Yeah, I was a cosmetologist for 15 years and it's just disgusting how toxic that, that whole industry is and you know, how much you got to swap out. But I have a, I also have funky genetics, right? So a lot of people talk about having a detox bucket and I laugh and say that I have a detox thimble. And so it doesn't take much for that thimble to, to overfill. So I, I really do have to walk a very straight line and sometimes once in a blue moon, I'll, I'll, I'll have a little pity party about it. Um, you know, I look around at the people just carely, you know, carelessly eating whatever the hell they want and doing whatever the heck they want. And I'm, you know, I get a little jealous and I also know what's in store for them at some point down the road. And, um, you know, I'm going to have my brain and my body working a heck of a lot longer than they will. So unfortunately for them, but, you know, so like for me, I, I mean, every week I do a castor oil pack every week, um, at least three times a week. Uh, I do coffee enemas at least once a week. I do binders daily. I do skin brushing. I do sauna three to four times a week. I do an Epsom salt bath, you know, twice a week. And so that's the things that I do to help detox. And then, like I said, I've, I've managed to detox my environment. I have air filters, water filters, you know, um, gotten rid of things. You know, I, I love my EMF rocks, you know, that I'm got with me at my station to help mitigate, you know, EMFs. Oh, I just I, had Jensen on the phone not too long ago. 
Yeah, I love him. Um, you know, I hardwire all my electronics and I make sure to shut my Wi-Fi off at night, you know, so there's, like I said, there's a lot of things that I do. There's a meme that I made not too long ago that said, um, my self-care sometimes feels like a part-time job, but it's better than being full-time sick. And, you know, once I started putting myself first, it was amazing at what all the miracles in my life that started happening, right? Because especially as women, we're taught to put our kids first, our partners first, everything else comes before us. And then we get the scraps that are left over. And that's why one of the reasons why women have such a higher incidence of autoimmune and a lot of these other chronic illnesses. And it's been amazing how life has shifted since I started putting myself first. Um, it's, it's amazing. Well, one of the things um, that I came across in my research article I wrote on oxidative stress and the nutrition paper I wrote last year was nationwide federal data from Canada. And in 2019, deaths of unknown cause, which I reached out to StatsCan, I said, hey, can you give me more clarification on what deaths of unknown cause are? And they gave me two understandings and explanations. One, autoimmune disease, so someone passing from autoimmune disease, or passing before a diagnosis, which is probably an autoimmune disease. And so in 2019, death rates of that doubled. And then in 2022, it doubled again. So this isn't a, a nice to do. It's kind of a need to do, especially like you said, if you want to be with your family and have your body and your mind working. And so it's just great for those of you listening, because you know, I talk about this stuff until the cows come home of what I do. So it's, re it's great to have you on here, Heather, that you're doing a lot of the same things I'm doing to encourage others that, you know, this doesn't make us weird. It's just that some of us are, like you said, your toxic bucket is like a thimble. Some of us can just process things better than others. And, you know, I live good, really good about 90 to 99% of the time. And you know, then I might have a cocktail and I might eat out, but I feel it. I feel it with, you know, headaches and neck pain and just like body aches and feeling sluggish. So like you said, like when you have one drink, like, is it worth it? Um, there's that too. So yeah, swapping out toxic products, you know, on the show here, I love to talk about making those switches. I'm so glad you mentioned those Glade plugins, but everything from what you're cleaning your home with, what you're cleaning your body with, what you're putting on your body or in your body right now, don't buy anything like that off Amazon or these third-party auction websites because of uh, fake products. If you're looking for great skincare, head on over to my skin shop. Uh, those are all pre-vetted by me. But yes, like you said, those are the easiest things to swap out. And then, you know, there's the environmental things. Food's a big one. But what about detoxing trauma? What about detoxing emotional stressors? What about detoxing energy that you might've picked up from going to an event or, you know, pass by somebody in the grocery store and they just had weird funky vibes. They got some funky <laughs> juju going on. And what, what do you like to do to keep your, your bio field, your bioenergetics as clear as possible? That's where bioenergetics really shine. I think, because a lot of times, especially when it comes to trauma, people think, therapist, you know, and there's actually a lot of research that shows that talk therapy actually keeps a person triggered, right? It keeps them re reliving that event and it can kind of keep them stuck. And a lot of bioenergetic tools kind of help go in that trauma without actually you having to relive it or even remember it. Because for the longest time I had been gaslit so long from my parents, from the medical community that I didn't even remember there was trauma until I started feeling a little bit better. And then I started, and then I remembered that my uncle committed suicide when I was four. And I, I knew that my parents were huge alcoholic addicts. So there was no way, no way they were there helping a four-year-old cope through that time. There was no way. I imagine they were, it was just a chaotic mess at that time. You know, so the bioenergetic stuff really can kind of help go in there and, and subtly help move those energies, those stuck energies out. So stuff like emotion code, I love emotion code and body code, like so ridiculously easy about getting deep into where there's an organ or a system where there might be an emotion stuck and then, and then, and then clearing it out. Things some days when I'm not working properly, my energy can get uh, switched. 
you know, polarity gets switched. And so just thinking of like an N at the top of a, a compass, right, can kind of help get your polarity back or getting your feet on the bare ground for 20 minutes and, and dispersing some of these EMFs and stuff that we've collected in energy during the day, you know, getting into an Epsom salt bath, you know, it's amazing the things that we can do to help ground. So there's one way to protect yourself. So to, to ground, um, you know, geez, there's so many amazing tools out there. Like right now I'm wearing my, my Nikki. It's a, it's a wearable that delivers frequency through a red light. You know, I've, I've used so many different, they're awesome for diagnostic stuff. There were a few that I found that I didn't find moved the needle when it came to actually helping people. Um, so that can be kind of tricky. I think, I think we're on the right path and I think it's coming really soon, but I just don't think a lot of the technology is caught up just quite yet. Um, but even stuff like Rife, you know, that's really where I started back when I was, I first got diagnosed with Lyme um, because there weren't a lot of answers for me. You know, the CDC just acknowledged last year that what I've had my whole freaking life is an actual disease, you know? So you talk about gaslit, I swear that's like in, in the dictionary, you look up the, the word gaslit and it's a picture of a Lyme patient you know, because the very disease that we've had our whole life didn't even technically exist by the CDC. So, you know, rife technology, that type of thing, you know, we're all energetic beings, you know, electromagnetic native fields, we can, we can um, measure, you know, the heart with an EKG, the brain with an EEG, you know, and it's just the research that's coming out. You know, we were just talking about Dave Asprey again, and his, his conference, Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, was one of the keynote speakers. And you know, his book, uh, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, is actually required reading for all my clients when they start working with me because all too often it was like, well, when can I go back to eating or when can I go back to, you know, acting and, or doing such? And it just made my head explode. It's like they didn't still see the connection of their actions still being a part. They still, you know, kind of took it as a like almost victim, you know, oh, I just got this thing, you know, but really there was something that you've done that you've kind of contributed to that, that led you, like I said, to, you know, not, not saying that you did it on purpose, like me with my early childhood trauma. And I said that it kind of opened me up to being a good host. Well, once you learn about these issues, then you have the power to then turn them around. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't, you know, but now as an adult, I do. And so, you know, working on my mindset daily, working on gratitude daily, making sure that my heart and my brain are coherent with, you know, daily coherence exercises. Like, so like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of things that I do on, on the daily, you know, the, the spiritual, mental, emotional, bioenergetic, the detox lifestyle. And people are like, how do you have time for anything else? But, but there is, there's plenty of time. I'm going networking later, you know, I've been traveling. Um, but it's, it's doing these things on a, on a very consistent basis is what's allowed me because it, it's so sad that people think that these diseases are just common, right? That it's normal. It's, you know, Alzheimer's is just a normal part of aging these days. And, it, and, you know, that's such bullshit. It's, it's not, and you can keep your brain into your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, never have to have Alzheimer's or dementia, um, and, you know, that's part of the reason why I know you do what you do and why I do what I do is because I've just seen too many people think that all this stuff is normal and it's, it's might be common, but it's not normal. Or they feel alone. They feel alone. Yeah, isolating for sure. Yeah. And, you know, thinking back for the last couple of years and most of you listening know I'm Canadian and, you know, things were locked down in Canada a heck of a lot longer than a lot of other places in the world. And, you know, that in and of itself, that seclusion, that isolation is just we're not meant to experience that. We, we have this torus field that extends out our human biofield about six feet out. And, you know, we, we can sometimes get this feeling of being charged up by being around other people with shared values, good boundaries, making friends with people that are also into health and feeling and looking their best and making good decisions, just good people to be around that aren't dramatic. You know, we really need that. We need that connection getting outside. I, th I think the, the answer to all of this is that our environment's changing. The landscape of how we lived compared to our grandparents is completely different in regards to level of toxins in our air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and foods, which primes us for this, you know, build up and 
all of that with things like yeast, fungi, heavy metals, mold, parasites, and uh, Lyme, right? That's huge. One of my clients has Lyme and it took her forever to get answers. She's like, I just feel terrible, but nobody believes me. My labs are okay. And so my heart goes out to individuals like us. You're not alone. Uh, You're on the right track. You're here listening to Heather and I getting some good info. And I, I hear you when you tell people what you do. I mean, I don't do the biohacking fire hose anymore. Of, you got to do this, 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 this. I'll just say, you know, I don't drink tap water anymore. Just do one thing. Let them see the changes in me by leading by example. But once you employ these different strategies in your life, they become part of your life and your routine. You don't even think about it anymore, right? Like wearing EMF clothes, having that air purifier going all all the time, your water in your home's purified. You have things to support energy coherence. I'm so glad that you mentioned Rife Technologies and where Rife Technology is going. So basically this uses frequency to tell your body to do different things. And we can actually get a stimulation and a supporting of even peptide production through different frequencies that are emitted. Um, There's actually a beauty frequency that I use all the time. It makes me feel really good and extra relaxed. But the Europeans have been way ahead of us in regard to the bioenergetic side of things, uh, biomedic- like bioenergetic medicine, the human biofield. So in the in North America, we're just a bit far behind on that. So if this is the first time you've heard about Rife, I do have a Rife technology on my biohacking page on the schoolofradiance.com, which is really great. It's actually the key coils. And uh, I know we both follow David Wong, Heather, who created the key coils, uh, or at least he follows you which is great. But, but once you just realize how good you can feel and how clear you can feel and just how much with more grace and ease, feminine faith, you know, the five F words, faith, family, fun, fitness, and finances. Those are my favorite F words. Uh, You just, you won't want to go back. And then you see other people just, you know, cruising through life, you know, like quote unquote, a normie. They just have no awareness that there's another option. So what, what what do you say? I call them muggles. Oh, well, I mean, at the the same time, it's like we don't want to create further division because the last couple of years did that. That was a trauma in and of itself. We want to have love for these people. But it's almost like people have to have a priming event to then have something. And then they go on their own journey. And then they develop more empathy for people who are just like, you know, I can't get out of bed today. I'm so tired. I don't know what's going on. So, you know, empathy hopefully will come. I love to hear your take on parasites and Lyme because I was on a scientific roundtable call. This is probably about a year and a half ago. And they were talking about animals and how the Lyme actually can be contained in the parasite. Clear the parasite, you clear the Lyme. I'm curious if you've heard that too. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I think it was like 70% of cases of Lyme were related to parasites. And Lyme is never by itself. It's always usually connected with some sort of parasite, candida, you know, heavy metals, mold, you know, trauma. It's all it's all interconnected. But people think that, you know, they're too good for parasites. Do you find that too? They're like, nah, I don't have parasites. You know, once I, especially the people that I work with, it's amazing how many people have pets, animals, you know, I was brought up on a farm. I used to raise horses and had dogs and cats and, you know, and one of my worst parasites was blastocystis hominis, you know, which would cause a lot of uncomfortable bloating after I ate. You know, I used to say I felt like Violet off of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Every time I ate, I was always looking for an Oompa Loompa to come out and roll me, you know, and get rid of the pressure. It was horrible, you know, but that's a pretty common parasite with people uh, who have pets, you know, or if you eat sushi or you're, you know, undercooked meat, even a lot of people are like, I'm just going to do the vegetables. But a lot of times, especially if you're eating out, they're not washing their veggies properly. And you can get parasites actually easier from unwashed produce than you can, you know, the meat. So if you go out to eat, a lot of times I tell people stick with the meat and not raw veggies because you're going to, you know, you know, you never know what kind of critters you're going to pick up. But yeah, it's, it's very common. And it's so sad because growing up on a farm, we're used to deworming and deep, you know, parasiting our animals. Oh gosh, you know, the horse, horse dewormer, how could humans possibly use that too, right? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> back during COVID, I couldn't actually get ivermectin in a pill form. So I was going to the ranch store and getting horse ivermectin and putting it on a gluten-free cracker and just eating it. it tasted like crap, but it worked. It was really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were so many protocols during that time. Uh, FLCCC protocol is one of them. And I did it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, my skin is incredible. I'm not burning in 10 minutes anymore. There's a link here, right? You reduce the toxic bucket, you clear things out, your skin looks better. You can manage stress, say, from UV radiation better. A little behind the scenes there, everybody. The other way that you can exchange parasites is through shaking hands and sharing breath. So if you've ever shaken someone's hand, you know, you might have got some parasites. So I like the idea of clearing out parasites like every quarter, but I actually also do something every 21 days. I'm, I'm curious what your self-care uh, purification practice looks like in regards to that too. You know, I, I do two good parasite, you know, cleanses a year. That's about it because I keep my system up running so well the rest of the time that I trust that my body will keep things in check the way that it's supposed to. So again, that's part of the reason why I live the clean lifestyle that I do is so that way I'm not worrying about because worrying sometimes that kind of paranoia will lower the immune system and cause, you know, to have issues where there weren't to begin with. So, you know, I maybe do once or twice a year, but the rest of the time I'm not, I'm not really that concerned with it because like I said, my body's gotten such, you know, a stronger constitution that I know it can handle things. What do you find with your clients that work with you, with your detox course and your protocols? Are they doing it alone or are they doing it with their partner? And what is it like for both of those types of individuals? Most of them have always come to me alone. Um, I would love it if they could get their partner involved. Um, I definitely cover that at the beginning that, you know, if you're in a partnership, it's definitely better if they can get on board with you because it's just going to be another barrier to your health. Um, you know, and sometimes that's what it takes to get better is getting out of that toxic relationship, you know, so, you know, we talked about detoxing and that was the one area we didn't talk about detoxifying your relationships as well, uh, sometimes is needed to get better. I mean, I don't talk to any of my family anymore, not my mother, not my father, like, and not for years. And my mental health has been better than it's ever been. Um, you know, so that was a really hard choice to make. But when the people around you that are supposed to love you and lift you up and all they want to do is bring you down and, and be bullies, like that they can't talk nice. Like, I just don't, I don't put up with that from anybody anymore. I love myself too much. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely helpful to have a good support system. And if it's not your partner, you know, a family, friend, something that can help keep you accountable and also keep, you know, keep, keep you up when things get dark, because a lot of times when we're overcoming, you know, overturning your life and getting rid of the stuff that doesn't work, it can feel kind of lonely and it can be kind of isolating. And sometimes people wonder, you know, they forget their why. And so having a good support system is, is crucial for, for getting better. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, when people work with me to optimize their skincare routine and the biohacking stuff and their rejuvenation plan, I always like to say, you know, do this with your partner, share your products with their partner so that they stop using toxic products as well. And you're both sharing and, you know, for their kids, right? Their teenagers, uh, young adult kids too, to kind of like share this stuff and, and lead by example. There's um, something I like to talk about. It's called the in and out conversation strategy when you're having conversations or you're around like you mentioned some of your family members that they kind of pull your energy it sounds like you've done some ancestral trauma work release you know breaking cycles things like that which is which is great to do it's hard to do and not everybody can do it or does it and you know we still want to love these individuals who just have different values and boundaries to us but it is about, you know, making that exit at the right time too, so that you don't give up your precious energy talking about things that just, you know, really don't matter. I find that so difficult when I'm out and I, I love to talk about health and things like that. 
And I, I find it so challenging when people just start talking about very surface level types of things and talking about other people. So, you know, clearing out your social circle too, to make sure that you're keeping your social skills up, but for the most part, you're spending time with friends and loved ones that have great shared values and that encourage you and build you up and you're forming that community. So I'd love for you to share, Heather, you know, do you have any closing remarks for this very fun, interesting interview that we've had here today? Yeah, you know, sadly, when people get to me, they've already gone through like 20 different practitioners who have not been able to give them any answers and they can feel very defeated. And I always try to tell them, you know, look at that as like, great, you found out all the things that don't work. You know, so you never know if that 21st practitioner is going to have the pieces to your health puzzle, you know, so not giving up, right? And um, going about it systematically, you know, don't try to take everything off on at once. You know, I used to kind of drink from the fire hose in the beginning and have my clients do that as well. And I'm starting to learn the wisdom of, you know, going slower. And I tell my clients all the time, you know, it took me a good year and a half to finally, you know, get the air purifiers up and the water and the, everything in the house switched out, you know. And now that it's done, though, you know, a year and a half later, woohoo, here we are. Everything's done. But in the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, how am I going to afford all this? And who's got time for that? You know, and if you're just small steps add up, right? Like at the end of the day, don't give up and, and just keep going. Find somebody that's going to listen to you, that's going to work for you. You know, I don't usually have, I tell people all the time, it's the other thing, I, the pet peeve I run into is they're like, I've been working with this person for a year and a half and I still feel like crap. Really, if they're moving the needle and going in the right direction, you really should start feeling better within three or four months and working with somebody who retests and relooks at things every couple of months just to see if you're on track is a huge bonus, right? Instead of just, you know, throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks. Um, but yeah, cause not all functional practitioners, you know, come from the same cloth, you know, same thing with bioenergetic practitioners. So, you know, not getting caught up in some of that, that stuff, um, some of the, the, the pitfalls that I've seen, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the bioenergetics and the energetic spiritual side of things. It really is about being grounded. And I know that's something that's just important for me. Like for me, I believe in God and I have a really strong faith and just grateful for my connection that I have. And just to not get distracted with all these other bright, shiny things that seem really good, but really they're just a distraction from faith, family, fun finances and fitness, uh, in my opinion. And oh, is amazing, but it's no, it's no, um, you well, got to start I'm, with the family. First. I'm glad you mentioned that because last, uh, last year, a year and a half ago, I wrote a paper on oxidative stress, which is basically a framework of, you know, what to integrate first. And for those of you listening, I have a free 30 minute video on that very topic of where to start with that that you can access in the show notes of this episode and the school of radiance.com because that's what the biohacking space was missing. It's, you know, you feel like you have to do anything and everything, but it starts with purification first, then add things like the red light therapy and, you know, the different tech, the different trackers, different feedback technologies. Uh, that's the approach I like to take. And I wrote a paper on that to create just a little bit more kind of like robustness to that concept of detoxing our environment first before we detox ourselves too, which I'm sure you walk your clients through in uh, what you do. So I'd love for you to share how people can find you and how people can work with you. Yeah, absolutely. I have a, a free uh, cookbook on my website. So if you go to the limeboss.com and that's L Y M E not lime, like we're making margaritas. So the limeboss.com get your free, uh, ebook cooking course. So many people that's like the, the foundations, right. And they don't even know, you know, how to cook a delicious, healthy meal, or they think that it needs to take two hours and it doesn't. And I, I show how easy it can be and delicious. Um, and then the other thing is I have a small foundations of health course. So putting together the mindset, the lifestyle, the somatic work, the diet, the sleep, right? All the things that I did to get healthy. Um, and right now, uh, for special for your, your people, 
get an extra $307 off with the code radiance. And so there's a link to that in the show notes, but um, yeah, the foundations of health courses is, is that foundation that we talked about, right? Don't pass go, don't collect $200, you know, don't buy the $20,000 this and the $10,000 that until you've got those foundations laid down. Oh, I love it. And for those of you listening, Heather and I are connected through a health collaborative and that I've been a part of for many years and you have as well. And, you know, these are a group of really, you know, we're different, right? We're all about being of service, helping others really feel their best, slow aging. And this is how we love to work and operate is to help you do just that. So thank you everyone for tuning in. And of course, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Thank you so much for everyone and for Heather for joining in this conversation. Be sure to subscribe, like, share this episode with a friend or family member, and also check out the show notes of this episode for uh, the course that Heather mentioned and some other things that we talked about in the show. And again, the book that Heather mentioned was The Biology of Trauma, correct? No, that's a summit. The book okay. was Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Perfect. Excellent. By Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying that. All yeah. right. Have a beautiful high vibe, a radiant rest of the day, everybody. And of course, I will see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast. <laughs>